today I'm playing with this piece of chunk. A Schneider Electronic, a French-made multimeter from 1975. And it has Nixie tubes. There are the input connectors. We have a main input, a 1000 volt input and zero is ground. Reference is a, a voltage reference to calibrate your uh, probes and stuff. On the back side we have a weird AC input, 50 to 60 Hertz. I'm not sure if it's 220 or 110 or a on and off switch and a familiar looking 12 volt connector. Uh, on the front side we have the range switches, 50 microamps, 50 millivolts, up to 500 volts. And the uh, AC is limited to 420 volts. Then we have positive volts, negative volts, ohms and, uh, well, millivolt scale on the side. And, uh, well, of course, AC volt in the top row. Um, these connectors usually have the center positive and the sleeve is negative, the white uh, wire goes to the center. On these old uh, items there is sometimes it is uh, the opposite way so uh, you have to be very careful when you you're testing an old device like this. In this case the center is negative and the sleeve is positive and that's why I hooked it up like this. Now let's turn it on and let us see what it is doing. So now it's on. Okay, it shows 000, zero, zero which is absolutely correct because I have not connected anything. The range switches seem to work. Um, well, let's hook up some uh, voltage from my uh, power supply from the second channel. Positive goes to input, negative goes to zero, and it tells us, yes, seven volts. Now I'm adjusting a little bit the voltages to see I'm on the five volt uh, range, five volt DC plus range. I have three volts at the moment. When I switch to minus uh, voltage, it shows us a plus symbol on the display. That reminds us to switch over to the positive voltage range. Okay, that's what I did now. 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts. Now the interesting thing is the 5 volt range goes up to 10 volts. So I have no idea at when, uh, when we go over 10 volts we have this overflow arrow here that tells us to switch to a higher range or to switch down the voltage. Now why they have chosen the 5 volt uh, marking on the range I don't know maybe they thought uh, it would be nice to have the middle of the range marked so we can go from 0 to 10 on the 5 volt range which is a little bit weird. Now I have 24 volts Exactly, and we measure 24 volts, which is not bad for a multimeter from 1975. Now let's see how it looks inside. It has uh, four screws on the bottom. Yes, here is the, the manufacturer sign. Maybe we get it in focus. Yes, Schneider Electronic made in France. I haven't found a lot of information. There was only one collector who told us that he has one, but uh, there are no specifications and uh, of course no schematics and things like this. that. It has a nice uh, uh, design. It folds open 
this is quite a remarkable design for that time. Um, you can easily access all the components, all the trimmers, all the... Well, there are also uh, capacitors, uh, trimmer capacitors, mainly underneath that shielded box. Uh, the input wiring, well, it's not too uh, expensive, but uh, well, I think it's okay. The, the black, the pot with the black housing is uh, the trim pot for uh, the, the adjustment. And there is a little operational amplifier in that uh, metal case. It's a UA709. We can see there is a space for a Ford Nixi a fourth Nixie tube. Maybe there is a model with, with four digits, I don't know. The lamps here are uh, neon lamps, the indicators. Now uh, let's remove the board from the case and see what's underneath. Yes, always take the right tool. This is important because with the wrong tool you will damage a lot. And you will see this short screwdriver is a little bit too short because there is a lot of metal brackets around the tubes and well I can't get in correctly it's a little bit difficult so I choose to get the right screwdriver you can damage a lot with the wrong tools Now the good thing is uh, the, the threads are all uh, metal inserts, which is very nice. Uh, it seems to be a good quality multimeter for that time. On the cheaper one you just have these uh, self-tapping screws that go directly into the plastic. You open them two or three times and then they go around forever. Now we have a big cap on the back side. There is a little bit stuff underneath the, the display tubes, mainly some resistors. You can also see a couple of transistors. Uh, everything is more or less discrete. There is one only one little IC which can be seen here underneath that ca those cables. Uh, I have no idea what kind of chip this is, maybe a analog to digital converter or maybe only a Nixie tube drivers or a multiplex or something. I'd expect that most things are uh, quite uh, analog in this thing. Here uh, these uh, wires are made to select the input voltage. They are now set for 220 volts, which is nice because, well, I live in Europe and that's the voltage we have. And of course it is made in France, so we can expect that uh, it can do 220 or 110 volts. So a closer look at the components underneath. There is a bunch of transistors and uh, a lot of inline resistors and there are more transistors on the side this, uh, in these square packages. And uh, the board that goes vertical here seems to be like something like a DC DC converter. I guess it's uh, the converter to make the high voltage for the Nixie tubes. They need about, well, I have to guess 50 to 80 volts or something like that. 
so especially if you're using uh, the battery connector 12 volt you need a, a DC converter for the higher voltage so let's see it has a, a plugged connection it can be taken out easily and we see there are two more boards everything is quite cramped full with boards and a really complicated design yes this looks like a DC converter there is a big power transistor in a very shiny and nice uh, heatsink a transformer a bigger transformer also a smaller one I don't know exactly what they are made for but I think that's the Nixie driver board then we can see the the big main transformer and well for those interested in numbers we have a couple of uh, part numbers but I think we cannot find a lot of information about this because it's really really old 220 well it's wired for 220 yes and I think that sticker confirms that uh, we have another lot of transistors here are some uh, adjustment pots on the switchboard also the input amplifiers with the metal canned uh, operational amplifier the 709 I hope we get some focus, yes. 705 is upside down. You can also see the date code, 7528 I think. Then we have a shielded metal can here with some trimmer uh, capacitors. I don't know if the reference, the voltage reference is hidden underneath that uh, that uh, cover well that was it more or less thank you for watching